Hey guys, what's up? It's JR Cuber, and welcome to the next installment in my cuboid tutorial series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to solve the 4x4x5 cuboid. So the 4x4x5 is going to be our first jump into a more complex cuboid that goes beyond the fundamental steps that we learned with the 3x3xn cuboids. This new step is sort of going to be like moving to a 4x4 from a 3x3. The way we're going to be solving this is to solve all of the centers first, and then solve all of the edges, and then that will reduce it to a 3x3x5, and we can solve it as such. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do now that the cube is scrambled is to solve this middle layer right here. And this is by far the easiest step. Um, now, the first thing that we want to do in solving the middle layer is to get these middle pieces in right here. And it's all a matter of just cutting through these middle layers in order to match these pieces up. So since these pieces are matched up, we can turn this layer. And as you can see, that did not solve uh, these pieces because the two green pieces are on the same in the same layer. So what you want to do is take one of them and move it to the other side uh, using the outer layer. Uh, doing that will bring it over here into a different layer. And then when we slice over, we can get all of our middle pieces in. So now to get these outer pieces, it's really easy. You just sort of do these kind of moves and kind of just turn it around until you sort of get the pieces where they need to go. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of hard to explain, but anyway, there we go. We have our middle layer. And so this is sort of like three by three by five where you want to have the middle layer solved first because that lets you know where the pieces all need to go and it's just really helpful to have. Anyway, the next thing that you want to do is get these centers in uh, for the top and bottom. Now, what we want to determine is where the yellow and white centers are going to be going. And since we have red here and blue here, the standard color scheme is red, white, blue. So the white center needs to go here. We already have two pieces in and we'll, we will form a the final bar, the two by one bar, like we do in a regular four by four to pair up with that. So in order to do that, since we can't do uh, 90 degree rotations along uh, these layers, what you want to do is do 180 degree turn through the middle so that we'll get this piece out of the way so you can rotate this one down and when you bring it back up that forms the bar and then you can put it in just like that and there we go we have our white and yellow and let's just check red white blue there we go we have that correct so the next thing that we need to do is solve the rest of the centers so we have these first two centers now we need to solve all of these centers in here uh, now this is a little bit more complicated and it's done a little bit differently. But anyway, let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and start with this uh, red piece. And what you want to do is find another red piece that will go here. Now here's a red piece, but the different thing about this is that since you can't do 90 degree rotations, it means that pieces sort of follow in an orbit. And so what that means is that this red piece, the only other place it can go is up here. As you can see, if we rotate it up here, the pieces just switch places, nothing really happens. And so this piece cannot go here. We need a red piece that's either here or here when we look around. So going to this side, there's no red pieces. Uh, here, here's a red piece right here. And this red piece will be able to come here. So how do we get it there? Well, the way we're gonna wanna get it there is by making the two pieces completely opposite of each other. So this piece needs to come actually down here, but we already have a red piece here, so we'll just go ahead and use this piece. And the other piece needs to be all the way across the cube up here in the opposite side. So that way, if we do a rotation through the middle, these two pieces get matched up. Now that these pieces are matched up though, we need to restore everything that we've broken up. So what we're going to want to do is take this bar and rotate it over to another side and replace it with an unsolved bar. Sort of like with solving edges. And now that we have that bar down to the bottom layer, we can rotate it back where it was, and then we can restore. And now everything is good, nothing's been messed up, and here we have our bar. And the same method applies for solving all the rest of the two by one bars. So here is another red piece, and we will go ahead and solve it with this last red piece here. So in order to get this piece opposite of this one, uh, it needs to come, let's see, the opposite spot of, he, of this piece is all the way over here. So the red piece needs to move from here to here. So the first thing we need to do is just take this piece and rotate it uh, up and then we can just turn it over and now it's in that spot. And so now the two pieces are opposite each other. 
So when we turn through the middle, the pair is formed. Now, if we did what we did before and sliced over here, we wouldn't have anything in the bottom, but this bar here is not solved. And so what we can do is go ahead and take this bar and turn it to the bottom. And then when we rotate this bar over, we have something to replace it with. So we can turn it up, uh, turn it back, and then restore. And now we have that bar solved. All right, so um, let's see. Let's go ahead and do this orange piece. We'll pair it with the other orange piece here. And that piece is going to be here because it's the only two unsolved pieces left since this one is solved. And it looks like we have the same case that we did last time. So we are going to solve this the exact same way that we did with the reds. So turn this piece to the bottom like that. And then this piece needs to come over here. So we'll just turn it over there. Now these pieces are opposite of each other. So we will turn it down. Now we actually have the exact same case as before. We have a solved piece down here but an unsolved pair up here. So we want to turn this unsolved pair down, and then when we rotate over, we can replace the unsolved pair with the solved one and restore. All right, so now we just have two left. So how are we going to solve two if we don't have any other pieces to uh, replace it with? So here's how this is gonna go. First of all, we need to know which of the green and blue pairs we're going to be solving, uh, just which one we're, we're gonna decide to focus on because solving one will obviously solve the other one. So I'll just focus on blue. So we'll take, we'll take this blue piece and turn it over so that the pieces are across from each other, as you can see, or opposite each other. And so what we want to do is when we turn down, as you can see, it uh, messes up this top bar and then this bar down here. So what we can do to make that not happen is make these bars exactly the same. And so as you can see, this one is red and this one is not red, this one is green. So let's go ahead and put a red bar right here. And we can uh, put this red bar in just by moving this spot up and then turning the red bar into that spot and turning it back. Now we have a red bar here and a red bar here. So now that we have these two bars that are the same, when we slice, it doesn't mess this up. Now all of our center pairs are actually solved now, but we need to figure out a way to restore this middle layer because it messed up our middle layer and our top. So in order to do that, we need to do the same thing that we did before. We need to make these two sides identical. Now as you can see, this one has a red bar and a blue bar. This one has a red bar and a green bar. So let's go ahead and put a blue bar there. Here is the blue bar. So let's go ahead and take this bar and turn it up, replace it with the blue bar and restore it. Now, as you can see, we have a blue bar and a red bar, blue bar and a, or blue bar and a red bar. And you wanna make sure that they're opposite of each other. So as you can see, the blue bar is up here and the other blue bar is down. We don't want it to be like this, right? So now that we have uh, this, we, when we restore, it doesn't do anything because you're replacing these pieces with pieces of the same color. So there we go, all of our center bars are done. Now your next thought might be to just immediately put them in, but we're not gonna be doing that yet because our next step is just going to mess it up if we do that. But the next step that we're gonna do is to solve all of these edge pairs. So how are we gonna do that? Well, it's really similar to a four x four and really similar to what we were just doing with these center bars. So let's go ahead and solve this bar. We will be solving uh, yellow and blue. And the other yellow and blue, that's the first thing we need to do is find the other yellow and blue, is right here. So what we're gonna be doing is doing the same thing that we did with the centers and make them opposite to each other. So if this one is here, then the other piece needs to be completely across the cube right here. So that's where this piece can go. And so now that we have these two pieces opposite of each other, we can slice through the middle to form the bar. And now what we wanna do is replace it with an unsolved bar. And here's an unsolved bar down here. We'll go ahead and turn this piece over to the right this time and then turn up an unsolved bar, turn it back and restore. And there we go, that solves our bar. So let's go ahead and move on. We'll do uh, yellow and red next. So go ahead and find the other yellow and red piece which is right here. So in order to get this one opposite of this one, all we have to do is actually just turn this piece up right there. So now this piece is up there and uh, this piece is opposite of it. So we can uh, pair the two pieces up and now look and see where we have an unsolved piece. And we actually have an unsolved piece either here or here. So it doesn't really matter which way we go. So we'll just turn it over here, turn an unsolved bar up 
turn it back and restore. Okay, so looking around, uh, let's just go ahead and solve yellow and orange. And the other yellow, orange and piece is here. And we will turn it up right there. So now that they're opposite, we can form the two pieces together. And then here is our unsolved piece. So we'll turn over, bring the unsolved piece up and then restore, restore. It will solve yellow and green. Uh, the uh, yellow and green piece is already in place, but uh, something I do notice is that our unsolved piece is gonna go right through the slice, and we don't want that. So let's just go ahead and turn it over, move it out of the way, and then turn this back. So then we can form the two pieces together, and then we will, uh, here's our unsolved bar. So we'll turn that down, and then turn over, bring this piece up, turn it back and restore. And now all of our edges are solved. So now something you may notice is that this is pretty much a just a scrambled three by three by five. We have everything reduced. Here are our centers, our corners, our edges, and then our center pieces all in here and everything. And so we can solve this just like a three by three by five, but wait a minute. Uh, it looks like our middle layer is messed up, but uh, nothing to worry about. We can fix this pretty easily. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory and you can get that middle layer solved uh, right back to normal again. One thing that was uh, you wanted to be careful about is when you're cutting through the middle layers to never do cube rotations uh, and always to make sure to cut back before you do make those cube rotations. So anyway, now that it's a 3 by 3 by 5 we're going to go ahead and solve our inner 3 by 3 by 2 first. So let's go ahead and put white on the bottom and then... Um, so you can turn this red piece in. Let's go ahead and put in a uh, green piece right here just by turning the spot up, turning over and restoring. Uh, in this stage, it is very important to make sure your entire middle layer stays the same. Uh, so we're gonna be paying uh, closer attention to that. And then uh, orange, which we can put right in here just by taking this orange piece, putting it in the right there. Same thing with blue, which we'll use this piece, just turning it in sort of from the back there. And there we go, our cross is done. Let's go ahead and put in the corners. Here's a corner that can go down here. And then, uh, that's right, we don't want to do cube rotation, so we'll turn the bottom, see if the uh, green, not green, but uh, red and blue uh, piece is in the top. And it's not, so we'll go ahead and turn over. This is actually where it is. So we'll see if we have a red and green piece in the top, yep, right here. So this piece will go down and that brings our needed red and blue piece up, which we can put in. And then the final uh, slot is back here with green and orange, uh, which is right here. So we will put that in and there we go. Uh, there's our bottom layer. Uh, let's go ahead and do the corners. As you can see, we have headlights here, so we will put those on the left side, do the corner swap algorithm, making sure to use the U prime and D instead of the Y prime. And then we will go ahead and solve our edges. I'm sure you guys know by now that if you see this U perm type case, it just means to do an opposite edge swap and then an adjacent edge swap. And there we go, there is our first three by three by two of the three by three by five. Let's go ahead and do the outer three by three by two. Uh, go ahead and solve the cross. We have the red piece and then the blue piece, the uh, green piece, sorry, and the orange piece. And then we will go ahead and put in the corners. And that corner in, and then the final one. And looking at this, we just have an adjacent edge swap for the corners. So go ahead and do that. And then we have an opposite edge swap, which gives us parity. But this is a sort of new type of parity. Uh, th this can occasionally happen where you have parity through all of the middle layers. And so this is uh, pretty easy to solve. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is just do the normal parity algorithm uh, to flip these pieces here. 
So that will just be uh, U2, uh, small U2, R2, F2, small U2, regular U2, F2, R2, small U2. So now that we just have this, uh, the only way you can actually solve this is to just fix the middle layer and then solve all of these outer pieces, which means solving the uh, three by three by two again. So it is a little bit frustrating, but let's just go ahead and go through it real quick. It shouldn't really take that long because most of the pieces are already solved. Let's go ahead and get this corner piece in, which is right here. And then this last uh, corner piece here. And then uh, do our uh, top layer. And then do our um, U perm. And then that actually brings us to another type of parity. Now this is going through a different axis. Instead of going through this one, it's going through this one. Anyway, uh, all you gotta do really is just hold it like this and then do the normal parity algorithm. So it's uh, small u2, then r2, f2, small u2, regular u2, f2, r2, u2, or small u2, and there we go. The cube is solved. That's all there is to it. That's how you solve a little bit more of a complex parity and just how you solve the cube. If this is helpful to you, then go ahead and let me know. And if you're still having trouble, make sure to rewatch through the part that you don't understand. And if you still don't understand, I'm sure there will be some people in the comments who will be willing to help you out. So that's about it for my tutorial of the 4x4x5 cuboid. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you haven't already done so, like my Facebook page, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and of course, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.